Hello everyone, my name is Angelica and welcome to my channel. I hope you are all doing great and you are ready for those of useful information. As I've noticed a big interest from you guys in my previous macrame projects, I've decided to share with you my top 8 macrame tips and tricks. In this video I will go through information which I think you might find helpful if you are starting your journey with macrame or even if you got some experience already and you wonder if there's any tricks or tips you can use to make your work easier. So if you find this video helpful make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more tips and DIY projects. And now let's get right into the tip number one. Before you start working on any macrame project, you have to choose the right code. First, you have to decide between a natural code and synthetic one. Uh, I made plenty of macrame projects already and I was always working on cotton code. This type of code is much softer and nicer to work with and in my opinion, the final result looks just much better and tidier. You are going to work with your bare hands, so you want something what's nice, soft in touch and doesn't damage your skin. Uh, I would only recommend to using synthetic code if you're going to put your uh, macrame piece outside. This kind of cord is more water resistant than cotton one. Next thing you have to take into consideration is the twist of your cord. We got three main categories macrame cord, macrame rope and braided cord. If you're a beginner, I would recommend using braided cord, but if you want to achieve beautiful fringe or feathers, I will go for a cord which is much easier to brush out than the rest of the cords. At the end, choice is your which type of cord or rope you like to work on. I personally always go for macrame rope. The main rule when it comes to choosing the thickness of your cord is to use thin cord for smaller projects and thicker cord for bigger projects. If you use thin cord for a big scale macrame project, you might lose the visibility of individual nodes and the whole piece might just look messy. We can break down macrame cord size into three categories. Small macrame cord from 1 to 2 mm thick, usually used for making jewelry pieces or small detailed projects. Medium macrame cord from 3 to 5 mm thick, this is the most used uh, thickness of the cord, especially when you work on small wall hanging, uh, plan hangers, lampshades and coasters. Large macrame cord will be everything above 6 mm in diameter. It's to create the big pieces when you want to cover a big area, it will create less but bigger knots. So if you are new to macrame technique, you of course have to learn the basic macrame knots before you start working on any project. There are five basic macrame knots. Laxer knot, square knot, spiral knot, half hitch knot and double half hitch knot. I won't go deeply through all of these knots and explain them how to do it as I've done it before in my previous video so I'll leave the link to it up here and down below in the description. To start any macrame project you will need to master only three of these knots and before you start working on the design or the project I will recommend to practice all of these knots knots, take some spare cord, wooden dowel and repeat the knot over and over again till you get the confidence in what you're doing. Macrame is such a straightforward process and it doesn't require you to spend too much money in terms of buying uh, special tools or accessories. Besides of macrame cord or rope, you don't really need anything else. There are a few things which you might find useful, like wooden dowel if you are working on wall hanging, sharp scissors for cutting your cord, measuring tape, brush or comb if you are going to create fringe or a feather, and the beads if you want to add more details on your piece. 
As a YouTuber, I of course say YouTube is a brilliant source of macrame tutorials. There are plenty of talented crafters who are kind enough to share their knowledge and talent. I personally created many macrame projects on this channel, so I put them all together for you in one playlist. So if you interested to see it i will leave the link to it down below small tip when it comes to youtube video remember you can always slow down the speed a few creators including me are showing just quickly the project without going deeply into the notes it's just overall explanation and the idea i understand if you're new to macrame technique this kind of video might seem too quick and chaotic so just remember you can always adjust the playback speed other source of macrame patterns are of course the books i got two books in my collection which helped me a lot when i started my journey with macrame and if you only want to create beautiful piece without worrying about your type of cord how long you need to cut it they also sell a macrame kits on etsy When you create a project, whether it's from video, blog post uh, or book, you might come across the words which you don't understand. By learning the simple macrame terminology, you will do yourself a favor and any project more clear and more understandable. Synet. It's a vertical column of tight knots. Row. A series of knots tied side by side. Working cord chords that are used to create the knot. Filler cords, the non-working cords around which the working cords are tied. Holding cord, object onto which cords are tied, for example wooden ring or dowel. Alternate cords, it's basically when you take two loose cords from adjacent knot to create new knot below the previous ones. The most important thing is to make yourself comfortable. Macrame can be time consuming, so make sure you are sitting or standing in the right position. When you're working on the small projects, you can always tape the one end of the cord onto the table. And if you're working on the bigger scale projects, you can always hang them on something like doors, a clothing frame or even a wall. Good habit to have is also wrapping the ends of your cord with some tape. It prevents it from untwisting, especially if you're working with macrame cord. It also helps you to put the macrame cord through the bit. Measuring the right length of your cord might be quite tricky. It takes a lot of time, practice and understanding the design of each project. There is a rule which says the length of your cord should be four times the length of your final project. But there are some aspects which you have to take into consideration. If your pattern is full of knots densely arranged, you will need to cut the cord longer. And of course, you cut it shorter if you see your pattern's got less knots around. And the thicker is cord, the longer it needs to be. When you don't know how long you need to cut your cord, always cut it longer than you think you need it. And remember, always save all the scraps. Never throw them away, you might use them for your future projects. I got separate box when I keep all my scraps and they are great for creating feathers or like a spare extra fringe. I hope you enjoyed this video and it encourages you to create your first macrame project. Let me know in the comment section if there is any more tips or tricks which I haven't mentioned in this video and you think other people might find them helpful. Also, don't forget to check my playlist with all of my macrame projects I've created so far on this video. And if you enjoyed, make sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And for now, thank you so much for watching, your support, and I will see you in my next video.